You can rename yourself if you want, or let me rename you since you were in first. I didn't even know you were there. I just snuck right in. <gasps> hey, Melissa. Ooh. Hello. I was going to do this from home and Isaac has this really fun thing he does every time he gets off the bus comes to the front door he opens the front door and screams Hello. so you're just envisioning that happening ready for it this morning before he left for school I was like listen I'm gonna be on a zoom call don't scream when you come in he does it without <laughs> fail every single day Hello. Oh my God, it's so funny. That sounds pretty familiar in my ha our house too. <laughs> Some form of screaming just because. I know. You never know what's going to happen. Why do I just talk so loud, you guys? <laughs> oh, you know the weight of my heart. I'm getting reverse trick-or-treated, guys. <laughs> Serena's the best. <laughs> Thank you. She's the candy pusher. Just what I needed. group I'm gonna rename you Emily I'm Madeline 
Hi, how's it going? Thank you, Mara. I don't know why it always does that. You're welcome. We'll give people another couple minutes to get on and then we'll start our accountability. So if you don't already know how many contacts you've made, start adding or tallying them up. Um, I can wait for that one fine. All right, so let's start our accountability. So we'll go through how many contacts you've made, if you've gone on any appointments or written any contracts. And Melissa, you wanna get us started? Sure thing. Um, today's been pretty quiet, so I haven't really gotten anything, to be completely honest, so. That's okay, there's time left yeah. in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Tony? Um, gosh, so I feel like I've just been so out of the loop for the last month and a half. Um, I've been busy helping my husband with his business. He's a real estate investor. So I've been really focused on that for the last four or five weeks. So this is my first week back into like real estate for me. And um, I met last just this last weekend with a potential buyer um, and sent her off to um, a loan officer to just find out what she can get a you know, pre-approved for and um kind of I'll probably touch base with her tomorrow and see awesome. if she if she, you know, followed through with that. And so yeah, it just I'm my first week back in again. So welcome back. Good job. Thanks. Mercedes. <laughs> Can you repeat what you asked again? Oh, how many contacts you've made and if you've gone on any appointments or written any contracts. Okay, I've only made one contact so far, and it was um, yesterday, I believe, and pretty much it was just um, sending them homes listed on the MLS, seeing what they were interested in, but other than that, I've only had one contact so far. I'm still trying to get um, everything done, all the paperwork done, so it's a lot in the beginning, so I've been yep. focusing on getting everything finished. Perfect. Good job. Courtney. Um, I haven't really done any of that because like on my team right now, he's just having me listen to some of the other agents uh, call leads. So that's what I've been focusing on. Awesome. Getting exposed to those scripts and everything will definitely be helpful. Emily. I was with my doctor all morning at a doctor appointment, so I did not do any um, inputting into command yet today, but I hope to this afternoon. And I had one good conversation with our local lady works in the post office and she saw that I'm a new agent and she was asking about that so it was a good connection with her good yeah way not to be a secret agent out there so you're running errands Gary 
Um, I had uh, coffee with an allied resource today, met with a new one. Um, yesterday met uh, another allied resource, um, spoke with a buyer, got all their info. Um, so I'm going to be working with them now and um, spoke with, uh, I, I made several contacts this morning, went by um, a business and brought them some cookies and, um, you know, just kind of schmoozed it a little bit. Awesome. That was about Good it. job. Ashley. Um, I have not done any more contacts into command today. I did preview three houses. So that's what I did this morning. Um, so that was kind of a learning curve because I had never used a lockbox before um, and making sure that I had it all set up correctly. Um, just make, getting out there and previewing the houses and then I obviously still need to do the contacts because I have not done that yet today. Awesome, there's time left in the day. That's some good things to check off your to-do list for sure. Tristan? Yeah, so I always have to do mine later in the day because I have to work in the morning. So um, but as of yesterday, um, my lender actually hooked me up with a uh, business partner he has up in Corvallis who actually has some leads down in the Eugene Springfield area that he uh, turned me on to. So I'm working on that partnership there. So I should have some more leads coming in that way. Um, and then my social media over the last few days, especially people have started noticing that I'm staying more consistent, posting a lot more. And uh, so I haven't put any contacts in yet, um, but I am working on getting that done later on today. So there is some stuff that's slowly but surely moving forward. Great. Awesome. Good job. And just as a reminder, when I refer to contacts, I'm talking about like people you've spoken to, adding them in, into the database is really important as well. But the first like way of starting getting that pipeline going and getting businesses who we're actually talking to or texting with or those conversations we're having. Timothy. Uh, call me Tim. I got to figure out how to go in there and change my. <laughs> I can rename you. I was like, maybe he's attached to Timothy. That's fine. Yeah, no, that's that's what my mother would call me when I was in trouble. <laughs> you know? Well, not in trouble yet. So, yeah, all right, well, that's now you're good. Tim. <laughs> so I've been working on uh, putting together some, uh, you know, some stuff on Instagram and stuff like that, and uh, try and get my presence out there uh, so that I can add more people to my database. Um, I do have a couple of folks that. Uh, you know, I knew really well back when I was in my 20s, so that's been a really long time ago, but they want to sell their house and buy a house over on the coast and uh, probably be having lunch with them sometime this week. Uh, they're older, so it was it was really interesting. And, oh, I don't do email and, I, you know, try to get them to the point to where, you know, we can be able to do DocuSign and that sort of thing when the time comes. I need them to have an email account and I need to be able to communicate with them, of course. And so we finally got that all done and I sent them an email today and, um, you know, oh, that's pretty cool, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you've dealt with folks like that in the past. Yep. That they, I don't want to deal with none of that. Well, you got to find a nice way to talk them into it because that's pretty important. Yeah, absolutely. So anyways, that's what I got going on. Awesome. Good job. Thanks. Mike Spencer. Oh, I can't hear you, Mike. Are you there? Uh, all right, Melissa. Hi, can you Demi hear me? Yep. Okay, yes, good. Can. I'm at. <laughs> Like, I think it's working. I'm in the shadows. Um, I was just looking. Um, see, I made 18 calls on Monday. Great. And or text. Um, I think 13 yesterday. I did 15, five, zero, 50 door knocks yesterday, awesome. but only got to actually talk to one person, but that's okay because I leave stuff. Good. That's good exposure. It is a long game, but I get outside, I get exercise and I get to do that. So in time, it will all pay off. Yes, it will. Great job. Um, can you hear me at all? 
Yes, now I can hear you. Okay, I tried connecting to the other Wi-Fi, Nick. Um, I don't know if you heard anything I said or not. Nope, not at all. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know if somebody else, somebody else is trying to talk right now. I didn't try to end anybody. <laughs> Are you done, Melissa? Okay. Yeah, okay, go ahead, Mike. Okay, I was trying to say I uh, released a foot page on Friday um that i've been working on for a little while and uh i announced it to everybody on my friends list and um that i had an open house uh this saturday um in eugene 1810 fairmont um my first solo open house myself and uh i got to gain a lot of experience from that i'm um, just trying to just trying different approaches and talking to people when they come in um trying and like trying to sign in sheet and then and then backing off an in sheet and just asking them as they come in and what worked for me and stuff. And for me personally, I found out that uh, I was better just asking them when they came through. So yeah, yeah. just learning different ways to talk to people and different approaches of things. And it was a yeah. uh, really good learning experience this weekend. So Good, I'm glad. Yeah. Great job, Amanda. Cool. Yes, um, I've got two new clients that are getting a pre-approval applications done. I came up with this line that I found to be kind of a killer. It's uh, don't let your money control your budget, have your budget control your money. Awesome. And that concept uh, kind of, it, it's, it's resonating, I found, with a lot of people because, well, I need to save for this, I need to do this, and I we just don't make enough. And well, let's sit down and actually look at, you know, your, you know, and I'm not a financial advisor, but I am competent enough that if you want to sit down with me and let's look at how much you're making, you know, in your house and how many, how much expenses you have. And we come to find out you spent $450 on takeout last year, last month. Uh it's the idea of empowering your your money habits and i it it's just i don't know good yeah awesome so working yeah i'm working a lot with like both first time home buyers and mm -hmm. i got goodwill job connection saint uh program through saint vincent de paul and my lenders all talking with a couple different vet programs and lower income programs to try to build a stepping stones from surviving and not doing so well, you know, needing programs to buying a house and having them go to your girl here and the lenders over there when time comes. Awesome. Good job. Jared. Hey there. Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'm at work. I had to just step out oh, for a second. Oh, that's okay. You want to uh, just update us on your contacts real quick? What's that? We're just going through our contacts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm following along here. Um, Good. Perfect. Yeah. So I've actually was uh, making some relationship connections here at my work uh, this week. A couple of different folks that are, you know, <clears throat> well, it's sad because everybody um, that waited, that thought they were going to wait. Um, from the interest rates where they were at and now looking at where we're at now and them wishing they hadn't awaited. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so, you know, the market's shifting and so is my business. And uh, <clears throat> right before I was, um, I've been just busy doing like four, 12 and 14 hour days, just crazy stuff. So um, I'm still keeping in contact with my database though and uh, just uh, plugging away. So good. And last but not least, Felicia. My mute button wasn't coming back. <laughs> now you're on. So, um, yeah, I need to hold myself more accountable to actually writing down all my touches with people because I have been pretty active on Facebook and I just don't keep track of all of that. Um, I do have two new um, contacts that um, I have met at wineries actually. And so I um, did reach out to both of those um, today and yesterday and sent um, a buyer's guide 
that's kind of personalized to me, um, to my branding to them. And so we'll see how that goes. Um, I One of my Facebook videos I found out last night got 13,000 views. Nice. Shocked, like, I don't, <laughs> I think it's because I put a little um, tagline, a little caption that said, wait for the surprise. And so people wanted to watch it to the end, I guess, but yeah, anyway, um, Good. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. Great job. Perfect. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our amazing uh, instructor today. If you have your Ignite book in front of you, make sure um, you have that open for today's class. If you don't have an Ignite 2 binder and need the material, put your email in the chat box and I will email that to you really quickly so that you have that in front of you um, as you go through today too. But Madeline is um, our one of our amazing um, compliance officers. She's based out of the Eugene area, and she started her real estate career with Keller Real Williams Realty in 2019. She has also worked in construction for six years and has been married for 15 years, has three wonderful kids, and she enjoys gardening and taking care of farm animals. So you'll hear lots of fun stories from her. But I'm really excited to have her as our instructor today. She definitely has a wealth of knowledge, so feel free to pick her brain and have a lot of fun with her. Awesome. Thanks, Mara. Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, like Mara said, I'm out of Eugene Springfield office. I see some familiar faces. Looks like some people from out of our area too. So hi, nice to meet you. I have all my curriculum here. I'm going to try and not to talk like a robot, but um, I am happy to have this be like really interactive. So feel free to, um, you know, if you have something to interject, you could use your little hand button that I think we all have, or you could just unmute yourself and start talking because I won't be offended. I'm just uh, happy to be here. So today, Ignite session five, generate your leads. So um, let's see, by the end of this session, you'll be able to one, generate business from the people you know and know you, two, identify your sphere of influence and calculate the potential income opportunity, which is always kind of exciting, right? If we're able to look at the people we already know, we don't really have to do much work to find that business coming in and um, just kind of get an idea of what we think, you know, that value is to us. Um, the third thing we'll be able to do by the end of this session is categorize your sphere of influence and expand your reach. Um, and then four, apply best practices of lead generation. Um, for today, just like maybe take a minute and kind of like ruminate over that and, and think of what you might have questions about. Um, feel free to kind of jot those down so that as we go, we can see if your questions get answered. Um, and if not, you can always, like I said, just interject and um, say, hey, I have a question, that sort of thing. All right. So let me make sure that I'm on the right page. So um, there we go. So those are the things we're going to do today. Um, so yeah, let's first talk about what you already know about lead generation. <clears throat> so this is a quote from Gary Keller. My fear, my fear of failure is greater than my fear of lead generating. Um, Lead gen, for myself included, can be something that is intimidating and it can strike some fear into people. Um, the thing I hear the most is that, you know, people think that they're going to be bothering, um, you know, their, their sphere. Oh, I don't want to bug them. I don't want to, you know, um, the reality of that is that you are just creating obstacles in your head because nobody said they didn't want to hear from you. You said that they didn't want to hear from you. Right. So, um, you know, being able to overcome that fear and, um, you know, pick up the phone or, you know, get out in front of people and, and just try and come from a place of contribution is a huge part of, um, you know, just, just getting started in the lead gen area. Um, 
so the activity of lead gen it goes right along with the activity of um, lead follow-up which we'll cover later this keeps us all from failing and instead allows us to prosper you never stop lead generating for the rest of your career in business and real estate it's your fear is your fear of failure greater than your fear of lead generating So you first learned about this, these six core competencies in session two. Lead generation is job number one. Leads fuel your business, helping you reach your goals you have set for yourself. The more leads you have, the more business and success you can have. Um, lead generation takes a lot of different um, forms. Lead generation can include talking to people about buying and selling real estate, um, capturing accurate contact information. This includes name, phone number, email, home address, and any other, any other additional information that someone is willing to give you. Um, you know, you could always get their uh, Facebook account or be there, you know, follow them on Instagram, those sorts of things. That's also a um, form of contact informa information that you can use to keep in touch. Um, and it also includes converting leads into appointments. Um, this is when you find active buyers and sellers, set an appointment to meet and agree to work together in the buying or selling of real estate. In the next five days, five sessions, I should say, you'll learn a variety of methods to gain leads. All right. It's understandable that there's a lot of fear around lead generating. Like I said, it's it's um, sometimes can be intimidating to put yourself out there and ask for business and, and see who might need your help. Um, we do know that it is the most important aspect of your business though, because without leads, they're not gonna turn into those um, follow-up calls. They're not gonna turn into those appointments and that sort of thing. So lead gen is just extremely important. Um, I'd love for anybody to kind of chime in here if you specifically have any kind of fears around lead generation. Um, there's also a little spot here in your book to kind of write down some notes and ideas or things that might be getting to you. Um, but I think, you know, in sharing fears around lead generation, I think we'd probably find that we're all have the same ones, right? Oh, well, yeah, I would say that my biggest thing is I'm not 100% on what to say. Yeah, really where to go with that because I'm so new. Yes. Yes. So I know exactly okay. what you mean. I'm a brand new agent. I, you know, like I, we had the class about like learning the market and that was really helpful. So it gave you a little bit more, you're like, Oh, I kind of know what I'm doing or have yeah. a little bit more yeah. knowledge to have something to talk about. Yeah. And I think something with being new too, is that, you know, you're in a place in a position where, you know, you're really kind of just establishing that like, Hey, I'm starting my real estate career kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, when I went through ignite, because I went through Mara's program too. Um, when I went through ignite, we have an instructor and he, um, encouraged us to, you know, I think the last thing you want to do is do kind of a bait and switch, right. When you're, you know, you're first starting to lead generate and you're contacting maybe people you used to be in touch with, maybe you aren't anymore. You're trying to just get out there, um, you know, and we'll do this a little bit later in the, in the course or in the coursework today. But, um, you know, the idea is just to, you know, let everyone know that you're in real estate now. Right. And, um, he was like, it can feel kind of icky sometimes to call up and be like, Hey, I haven't talked to you in, you know, however many years or so many months, it's great to hear, you know, and talk, 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 and then go, Hey, by the way. And they're like, Oh, well, she's calling me, but she didn't really want to talk to me. Shoot. She just wanted me to tell me she's in real estate. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, Michael McGuire was, he was a former KW agent. He's not here anymore, but he's a really cool guy. He said, you know, coming right from the top and saying, Hey, do you have a minute to talk about business? Because you're immediately setting that, that, that spot of like, listen, you know, I'm want to tell you about my business. I want to tell you about, you know, what I'm doing now. And then being able to, of course, you know, these are people that you want to stay in touch with too. So following up with that, you know, care call protocol where you're saying, you know, how's your family, da, 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 da. But also, you know, being able to, to start off with that, like, you know, this is a call just to, to let them know so that they don't feel like, 
I like to ask you if they have time to talk about business because that gives them kind of the driver's seat where you like you're not holding them hostage. Like if they're like, hey, I really like this is like mm-hmm. convenience for me right now. Like that gives them a way to be like, you know what, like maybe, you know, such and such time on Friday would be better or. Exactly. Yeah. Or you could say, hey, you know what, I'm going to send you a text or and maybe we can connect another time if, it, if they're busy. You know what I mean? But it's at least it's yeah. opening up that conversation and letting them know, like, you know what the call is about without, like I said, you don't want that bait and switch kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, I can appreciate that for sure. It is definitely hard to at first kind of figure out exactly what, what to say. Um, I feel um, like oh, you, go ahead. Can, you can avoid the bait and switch. I, I found the easiest way to kind of open up those doors was like, through Facebook, for example, I'm sure a lot of us are old fashioned enough to still use Facebook. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you go on there and your friend from high school just had uh, another baby or just got married or kids are in high school or husband Mm -hmm. broke his arm or literally anything. They post anything about their (laughs) life. I've used that as a reason to get a hold of people, even if it is just through Facebook to get Mm -hmm. their contact information. And I don't, wouldn't call it a bait and switch because oh my gosh Cody and Savannah just just got into high school that's crazy they were in elementary school last week I swear to god where did time go let's catch up and then we opened up the time for having a casual conversation to talk more about them Mm -hmm. yeah and I didn't bring up real estate until basically yeah the until either a we're on the phone for an hour and a half talking about how life changed and what, you know, people want to talk about themselves. Let's all be honest. If somebody yeah. called up and say, Oh my God, can you tell me all about you? Oh my God. I would love to tell you all about me. I would, <laughs> I could make all the time in the world to talk about myself. It's and true. When you, when you call someone to open that can of worms and say, let's talk about you a shit ton. They want to run with it. And I, I find it really easy to, to end up naturally talking because after people talk about themselves for an hour and a half and they know they took a lot of your time and it's like shit how are you doing I saw that you got engaged I saw that you had a kid I saw you Mm -hmm. had something going on or what's new with you Mm -hmm. oh well since you ask I'm actually a real estate agent (laughs) and I got engaged and you know blah 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 yeah Exactly. But, yeah. And I think, I think that's, that goes into a fear too, you know, right. We always kind of wonder that someone's going to either be annoyed that we call or, or, you know, not want to talk or that kind of thing. And the typical, you know, it's not always. Call, if you think. call with the intention of having them talk about themselves and they know that yeah, they will run with it and it will be a welcomed call. And then there's that feeling or want to reciprocate the conversation, especially after somebody's droned on about themselves forever. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like we say here, I think, um, you know, a lot of these fears are the exact same fears that a lot of the really big mega agents that we all know had in the beginning, right? That they, they just were a little nervous about lead generating. And now that they are these big mega agents, that's what they do. And they know they need to do it and they keep on top of it to keep on top of their business. So, um, Let's see. So in order to just erase that limited thinking, um, these are kind of some ideas that I want you to jot down in your guide. We've got this on page 5.3, um, our lead generation fears and myths. So the first one is, I think lead generation is really difficult. Um, for Gary Keller, what he said is that he was confusing effort with enjoyment. And I think that's pretty profound because this is not hard, right? It's not hard to difficult to, you know, find a phone number. Oh, my fingers don't work. I can't dial. These things are not difficult, right? It's just that you're mistaking effort with enjoyment. You might not enjoy the, the, the process of lead generating, but it really doesn't take that much effort to just sit down and make some calls or write some texts or, you know, reach out to some people. Um, lead generation is actually easy. It's just not particularly fun for a lot of people. 
But for you, it might be fun. Who knows? You just have to start and figure it out, right? <laughs> um, the next fear or myth is I don't have time to lead generate. Um, Gary Keller said, I had an issue of making time to lead generate and protecting that time. So um, we talk a lot in just the Keller Williams sphere about time blocking and, and the importance of that and being able to keep yourself on a schedule. Um, you know, these are the hours that I lead generate and that's all that I do, right? Um, the other thing, like, like um, Ashley was saying, I don't know what to say. Um, Gary said, I had to get in on the path of mastering the dialogue skills needed in this business. So um, script practice, all the really big agents, all the really huge mega agents, they do it, they script practice because you don't wanna be practicing on your customers or your clients, right? Um, you would practice your scripts beforehand so that you have that dialogue down and you know the next thing to say and it comes easily to you. Um, I know I've been in situations before, you know, the thing that I do a lot of is this around here, right? And and talking to agents and and making sure that um, I'm able to succinctly and precisely, you know, get my point across, right? And I have that for myself in in this position as compliance coordinator. I have scripts for myself that I send out, you know, whether it's an email or what that I've figured out is just the right wording so that it really makes sense to people and that um, I'm not confusing anyone by what I'm asking for or things like that. Um, it's really important in any, you know, um, career where you're interacting with the public or with clients or with, you know, coworkers, um, you know, being able to have those scripts down so you know how to say what you're trying to say and make it come across properly. Um, Another fear is I'm afraid of making mistakes. Gary said, I found that lead generation is nothing more than a set of tasks and skills that are well-documented. Um, Gary discovered that time on task over time is the simple secret to his success. Um, I hear that a lot in, in the Keller Williams um, you know, training and all that, time on task over time. The reality is, is the more you do something, it's you're, you're gonna make progress. Um, you know, a lot of agents know how many calls they need to make that will, and we'll kind of go over this also, you know, how many calls do I need to make to get this many clients to make this much money? And it's just a matter of doing that task over time and, um, you know, making it happen. Oh, there's everything I just said, guys, right on the next slide. <laughs> um, so lead generation is the number one key to being successful in real estate. It doesn't matter how great you are at selling houses. If no one knows you're in the business of selling houses, and if they don't feel connected to you in a way that has them reach out when they're ready to sell, then they won't reach out to you when they're ready to sell. Um, it's that important thing of staying top of mind for people, right? Um, because I can help somebody a year ago buy their house and it was a great experience and they loved it. And, oh, I'll definitely, um, you know, I'll definitely call you when it's time, you know, to sell it again. And then if I don't call them for two years, they're going to forget and they're going to go in. And even from a referral standpoint, right. Um, you know, I, if I'm not in front of their face, if I'm not getting in touch and making touches and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, they might not think of me when a friend says, you know, I want to sell a house, my house, but, um, you know, I don't really know anyone to help. Right. So, um, it's a matter of just being able to get yourself out in front of people and letting them know that this is what you do. Um, so you already have two key components to lead to lead. You already have two key components to lead generation, a sphere of influence and a database. So who has heard of the sphere of influence? Can we just give a little? Yes, I think. So if you've been doing this course for long enough, you've probably heard of the sphere of influence, right? So the sphere of influence is the group of people you know and who know you. This is a group of people who know, like, and trust you. Therefore, they are the people that are most likely to do business with you. And how do you access this group? With your telephone or your, you know, phone from a standpoint of calling people or from a standpoint of texting people or getting in touch with people on social media and all that sort of thing. So let me get you to the next slide. This is a nice little um, 
graph that can help you um, figure out your sphere of influence income opportunity. So you have this on page 5.4. Um, what you can do is pick up your phone if it's near you. And if you scroll all the way, well, this is the way it is on an iPhone. Um, if you scroll all the way to the bottom to, um, of your contacts, there is a total number of contacts right there. Now, granted, I'll say here, I'm looking at mine and I'm just gonna do it with mine so that we have a good um, uh, example. I have 318 contacts in my phone. Now I know full well that one of those contacts is my grandma and she is never gonna buy or sell a house and she's kind of crotchety. So I'm probably <laughs> not super eager to call her, but this is the way you get business, right? Is, is reaching out and um, contacting people. So in my phone, I have 318 contacts. So um, that goes in space number A there, number of contacts in space number A, guys. Space. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so that goes in the top there. Um, potential closing opportunity from contacts. So you're going to take, since you're in your phone anyways, get out your calculator. You're going to take your number of contacts times 0 0.081. And on my contacts with 318, that puts me at 27 point. 25.7, I'm gonna round up to 26. So um, those are the potential closing opportunities for my contacts. If figuring that, let's see, I'm gonna read off this statistic to you. According to the National Association of Realtors, the typical person moves every eight years. According to the 2020 census, home ownership rate in the US is 64.8. If we can assume that 64.8 of your database is a homeowner and they will move every eight years, this means that every, that about 8.1%, so that's what that number we just got, the 0 0.081 of your database were buy, sell, buy, sell, or buy and sell a home every eight years. So we're taking that large number at the top of all your people in your contacts in your phone, and we're shrinking it down to the 8.1% that will potentially buy or sell. Um, a home every eight years. Um, we can also look at the potential referrals for database. So this is really big too, because, um, you know, as you're getting in touch with people, um, you know, they might say, well, you know, I'm never moving. I'm staying in my house. You know, like I just said, I might call my crotchety grandma. I know she's not going to move. She wants to die in that house. So, but she might know someone who wants to move, right? So she can refer the, that person to me. Um, so, Okay, I'm just following the uh, curriculum here to make sure I don't miss anything real quick. So yeah, at this point at the at line C there, we're assuming that 10% of the people in your phone might refer you a, um, a client in the next year. So we're taking that 318 that I got on my phone and I am going times 0.10. That gives me 31 on my worksheet here. So if we add those two together, we get 57. Um, the average commission in our area, it varies, of course, right? And according to uh, antitrust laws, we can't do a whole lot of chit-chatting about how much is a typical commission or what we should be charging and things like that. But a typical uh, the average commission, I would say in our area, this, this shows 5,000. Um, if we're going off the median price um, that we see normally, which is getting up close to half a million there, it's almost at 500,000. I'd say you could probably safely say that an average commission is gonna be around $10,000, depending on exactly what the uh, listing agent has negotiated with their client. So if we, on my little guy here, your income opportunity at the bottom there, for me coming out of um, the 
line B and line C, adding that together was 57. I times that by $10,000. On my little sheet here, that's $570,000 in potential income. That's nothing to sneeze at, folks. I mean, that'll do you pretty good after taxes, right? So, um, The point of this exercise is just show you that you already have you're already in contact with those people. You already have, you know, if you have that many contacts in your phone, um, there's already that potential there, and that does not cost a thing for you to pick up the phone and call those people. So, um, what about all you guys? So that was those are my numbers. Let's have a few people shout out their so numbers. The, the problem I'm having is that. Well, let me back up. I mean, I have 132 contacts in my phone, but by the time I called all of them to, you know, make sure I could be calling them every now and again and, you know, sharing real estate stuff with them and so on, right. it shrunk it all the way down to about 38 people. I mean, doing the math on this, I ended up with an income opportunity of 240,000, but that's not accurate. Not yeah. once you've called everybody in your phone and you find, no, 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 I'm not interested. No, no, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. what do you do? You know, now you've got to look for other people to put in your right, your, exactly your, your database. And by the way, what's the difference between your sphere of influence and your database? I mean, I'm using whoever right. I can find to put in my database in command. Yeah, and we kind of get into the database part here in in the in a little bit, so we'll kind of go over that too. Um, you know, I think the thing to remember is that. You know, like you said, when that number kind of dwindles down, that's kind of that that funnel, right? Where where we start with a whole lot of people and it kind of dwindles down to not so many, right? right. And um, you know, we all have our clients who are at a certain point of priority as far as I don't want to I shouldn't say priority, but you know, we've got our those those A clients that are like, yes, I want to buy or sell in the next month. Like let's go look now. We've got those B clients who are like, uh, yeah, in the next six months, you know, that sort of thing. Um just because someone says like they're not wanting to buy now doesn't mean that they're not, you know, they life changes, right? Anything yeah, I, I get that. That's not that's not what I'm talking about. Most of my friends and contacts and that sort of thing. They're all about 10 years older than me. I don't know why I grew up with friends older than me, but I did. And, uh, you know, I'm 56 now. That puts them at, at an average age of 66. And they're all settled and don't want to move, don't want to talk about it, don't want to, they don't have email addresses. They don't want to get an email address. I've right. got the, I was telling you earlier about these clients that, you know, I had to talk them into getting an email account, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what do you do? You know, if yeah. they say no, they say no. You got to move yeah. on. Exactly, exactly. And that's true. You know, you don't want to be coming from a position of of hounding anyone, right? We don't, the last thing we want to do is lose our friends in this. In this well, exactly. Problem. So now I'm looking more at uh, social media to, you know, gain yeah. contacts that way. And a hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. anyways. Yeah, that makes total sense. And, and I think, you know, when you're talking to people and they are saying, you know, like, well, you know, yeah, Tim, we really like you and we would work with you. We wanted to move, but we don't want to move. You know, right. um, that kind of goes into that next, uh, that, that C, um, line there potential referrals, because if they like you and trust you, and they at least know that you're in real estate and you're keeping in touch with them, there's the potential for them to refer you to, you know, their daughter or their son or their friend from church or whoever. So, um, you know, it's like you said, you obviously want to listen to people. If they say, no, I'm not interested. Don't call me again. Absolutely. Don't call them again. Cause that would be really rude not to do. Not to go away their wishes. I mean, uh, I'm not trying to be negative. You know, I, I always try yeah. and look at, at the positive, but I'm also yeah. a, a realist. You know, I'm a very realistic oh, yeah. person. You know, I've been 100%. in business in all kinds of different ways, and uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I don't think I don't think you're being negative. I think that there's a ton of value in being able to come to this space and say, like, hey, here are the things I'm having trouble with. This is kind of where this isn't quite adding up for me because um, probably a lot of people are feeling the same thing as you, um, where they're like, ah, it just feels like things are dwindling. But, um, you know, it's that, like Gary said, it's that time on task over time that um, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? And um, yeah. Just, just keep at it. I think, I think we'll get, you'll, you'll be doing well in this business for sure. Um, what, what did Eric say yesterday at that uh, um, lecture, Tim? He said, your sphere of influence is people that know you and like you. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's what it is right there is people that could see would see you on the street and go, hey, Tim, how's it going? How's the family? Yeah. You know. Sure. And those are the people I do have in, you know, that I put in command. And, uh, you know, I think those are going to work well for me. It's basically and I don't think any of these people are going to buy a house. Some of them probably will never be able to buy a house. And mm-hmm. and some of them are living in a house that they never want to leave. It's It's kind of a catch 22. But I do believe that those people would refer me if they knew somebody that was looking to buy or sell. And I guess that's the, that's the gist of it, but I do need to, I've, I've got to have a lot more people in my database than what I have. So I'm just looking for other avenues. Yeah. And that's what this is all about, right? You're going to be learning how to grow that database, you know, working with your sphere of influence first, and then your database grows from there and um, just sticking with it is what's going to, what's going to get you some results. So Oops. We already covered how many people you have in your phone and how many potential sales they represent each year. This contest tactless is your database. So your social media is another potential database. If we're going to be a relationship with our con- contacts in a professional sense, we need to have them organized and accessible in a smart database. Although your phone may be smart, it is unlikely that your database is yet. We'll fix that for you. Um, today we'll touch a little bit on feeding your database. In the next session, we'll session we'll cover how to make your database smart. So that's kind of alluding to our um, software that we have, or our, our online platform that we have that we all use. That I'm sure you're all getting familiar with, which is Command. Um, I've been doing some learning in Command because when I started in real estate, we were still using something else, and then. Um, they transitioned over into command and it was kind of this just quick little transition and, and bugs were still getting worked out of command and stuff like that. And, um, now I'm learning a lot more about it recently and uh, all the really cool things it can do. So, um, that's what they're talking about when they talk about making your database smart. Um, you have a sphere of influence, a database, and you've been generating leads from that database by communicating with it strategically. Um, so has anybody been using command as a tool for, or have you been using a different tool to, to look at your database? I've I definitely use... been using command. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Ashley, did you, were, I saw your hand go up for a second. Are you using command as well? Oh, I was just going to say, I'm starting to get people put into command, but as far as like using it for, I'm guessing like it. I don't really understand it completely yet. Is it like automated follow-up or it's like, it tells you, oh, hey, you need to follow up now. It's able to give you prompts. Uh Uh-huh. You can, and I'm learning a lot about it too. Also, like I said, it's been a ramp up of like, okay, we're switching to command. And then now like new updates have been coming in and I've been really trying to stay on top of those to to make sure that I really understand exactly what it can do. Um, But I was on a call today with um, Jeremiah. He's uh, one of our agent services division coordinators. And uh, he was showing me some really cool tricks that are, you know, um, just ways to use those contacts and use your tasks and your notes, things like that in command. So there's a lot of different ways it can work. And we're going to be doing a lot of um, education in the uh, market center for stuff like that um, coming up. I know tomorrow there's a few different, and I gave Tom my sticky note, but um, there's a few different, um, different classes that are coming up tomorrow um, and Friday in the different market centers. Like there's one in capital city. I don't know if there's anyone here not recognizing any names, but uh, there's one in Capital City tomorrow morning um, that's for smart plans that I'm hoping we can also get here in Eugene Springfield at some point. Tomorrow in Eugene Springfield, we're also having a class that is about connecting your DocuSign to your command, which is something that is blowing my brain. That's amazing. <laughs> like I had no idea. And it's going to make- That would be way cool. I oh, still have oh, the DocuSign, so I have no idea even anything about that yet. Yeah. So if any of you are in the Eugene Springfield Market Center, Tomorrow from 12 to 1, Jeremiah and I are doing this class, and I would encourage all of you to come because where I live, documents and uploading and stuff like that, right? And um, just say that again. uh, It's the Eugene Springfield Market Center from 12 to 1. We're doing a command uh, with DocuSign. Is that the same link? 
you know, there's no link for it. It's an in-person class. Oh, in-person class. Oh, okay. Got yeah. it. So I missed that part. I like, it. I think that's fun. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can make it, but um, I want to do a lot more education on connecting that kind of stuff. And then also like to go back to what actual this coursework is about using your database and using command as a CRM, there's smart plans and um, things like that. And I want to try and get some education surrounding that into the market centers as well. I know that at Capital City on Thursday tomorrow, there's a um, there's about smart plans with Jeremiah. And then down in Southern Oregon on Friday, there's one with Jeremiah with smart plans and the command and DocuSign class. Um, really, really valuable stuff. So I'm going to try and get that at Eugene Springfield and wherever everyone else is. Um, well, up in Sunset Court, I feel like you get that a lot because Jeremiah is always up there. But um, okay. I know this is like off topic, but for that class tomorrow, do you have to like pre-register or I just show up to this no. the office? Nope, just show up. Okay, okay. I will try. There's a link to pre-register and it says to pre-register, but I told you to just show up. So just show up. <laughs> I will do what I can to get there. I would love it. So, oops. Is he not going to the Eugene Springfield location? What was that? Is Jeremiah not going to the Eugene Springfield location? No, he'll be here tomorrow. Oh, okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. He'll be here tomorrow. So he's doing a, a, a we're doing one class from 11 to 5, 11, 15 to noon. That's a, a video class. That's going to be really cool. And then from noon to one or two, I think, I think it should be just one, but maybe we might make it till two. Um, we're doing the DocuSign and command class. So he'll be in. So what are your ahas about being the lead generator for your business? How might you shift your mindset to overcome your fears about the lead generation process? What do you guys think? We've been chit-chatting a lot. I really love how everyone's being so interactive. Sometimes I get on Zoom and everyone just stays with their black screens with muted and it's really hard to enjoy. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really, I don't really have a problem talking to people. In fact, I love talking to people, but the thing is, is that I know how small my sphere is mm -hmm. or database or whatever you want to call it at this point yeah uh, i just i just really got to find some other avenues to bring some more people into that absolutely and then follow through i mean you know listening to eric harpool yesterday you need to be making about 20 calls a day well that's not going to work <laughs> yet, you know there's like, a database I call 20 of the 38 day. people and then what am i going to do the next day you know and, yeah. <laughs> so yeah i'm right there with you I'd say I'm right there with Tim on my contacts and stuff like that. So um, I'm trying to find different avenues as well. That's kind of why I came up to this class, see if there's other things. Um, and then besides that, I'm going to try to do open houses each weekend that I can. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The numbers are really motivating. Um, you know, I have, I don't know, 110 in my database. In my phone, it shows like a thousand contacts, but Honestly, a lot of those are like my kids' contacts because of iCloud. <laughs> and so I'm um, right now just going through my phone and deleting is, you yeah. know, the ones that aren't relevant. But um, we don't call high school students, right? They'll, I, <laughs> they'll, they'll buy. Probably not quite ready to buy. <laughs> but I'm definitely yeah. Your motivated parents to might be, uh, though. get that number. Yeah, yeah their parents, true. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I think, you know, this section is really a lot about mindset, like we said, and overcoming those fears, overcoming those myths. And I think the biggest thing is this, this idea that we tell ourselves that people don't wanna hear from us. And it's like, well, that's really rude to yourself. Maybe somebody really wants you to call them. <laughs> uh, on this group, oh, was somebody else trying to talk? Go ahead, you're fine. Go ahead Ashley. Um, I was just going to say on the scripts training call, I can't remember if it was yesterday morning or what morning it was because all my mornings are blurring together. But um, on one of the script trainings, they were basically just like, okay, well, you can like pump yourself up before you do your calls, like do like a power pose or whatnot have you. And then just like have that mindset, like they need you, like how, like, like how, like much of a disservice are you going to do them by not being there to provide that for them when you know that like you could have that value for them and if you don't call them they're not going to have it so like just like going in with the mindset that like you're what they need mm -hmm. i think will definitely be helpful yeah 
And I find talking to, as far as expanding your sphere, a lot of people are most receptive to in-person interactions. So finding something that you like to do and then going and doing it regularly is a really good way to meet people. Like uh, if you're an, if you're live in the woods and you're an archer and there's an archery a couple miles from your house, going to the archery will be a really good way to meet other people with like interests or fishing, going out to local fishing ponds or going to beauty salons or wineries is a popular one, you know, basically just doing something that you like to do because it puts you in an organic sit setting to talk to new people. Musician, I know there's a musician here going and doing your shows, but basically maybe link going there a little bit early and lingering a little bit late and trying to expand your clientele to the uh, a little bit younger than maybe what you your sphere is so that you might have more ready willing and able buyers yeah or sellers yeah i try to talk to everybody it, 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 as many people as i can you know we we do four hour shows and you get a 15 minute break between each set it's not a whole lot of time to connect but you try to you know and, 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 and I, i've gotten a few well, if the show's four together. hours and you spent eight hours there say two hours before they're eating some lunch and kind of BSing with the staff and just hanging out. Oh yeah, we're gonna be the performers today. We're gonna be playing a little bit later, but I just kind of wanted to shoot the shit with the crowd before I got going and yeah. hanging out and doing a little afterwards meet and greet just to be able to co-mingle a little bit around that show. Yeah, not only am I a musician, but here's my little real estate pin or what have you yeah i appreciate your ideas it's just uh you know if you saw our production there's about three hours of setup time and an hour and a half of tear down time and uh you know you're really busy during that time so the the actual time that you have to spend with somebody face to face is more like your 15 minute breaks uh, yeah. in, in the bar you know it's usually 9 to 1 a.m and by the time we're done playing everybody's leaving <laughs> but uh, it, your ideas are great. You know, it's just a matter of trying to find time to work. Anybody I see that I haven't seen for a while, I'm always, hey, how you doing? And then, you know, as I'm stringing out cables or whatever yeah. I'm doing, setting up, you know, you try to say something. But yeah. You know, anyway. the, the, the key is with lead generation is that it's not like a one-legged stool, right? Like you need a few legs on your stool in order to, um, in, in order to build your business. And I know lots of people who would say they have zero people in their sphere of influence and they still have really profitable and great businesses. And we're going to go into that next a little bit as far as prospecting and things like that. Um, but you know, there's, there's lots of people who either don't have a sphere of influence in their area. Maybe they just moved in or they literally know no one in their area or don't want to work in their sphere of influence as much. Um, you know, that could be a thing too. It's like I said, like, I don't really want to be my grandma's realtor. That's just kind of, <laughs> for some people, that's the way it is. So the last thing that we want anyone to feel like is, you know, like we get through a section and go, oh, my sphere of influence is small. I'm never going to make it. Not the case, not the case. It's just a really easy way. Or I shouldn't say easy, but it's, it's, it's right in front of you, you know, like the, the group of people. So um, as far as let's see, I just want to make sure I'm on the right page here. So you will hear this lead generation. You'll hear this over and over again throughout your career. It's really the most important activity. It's the first thing you need to know to start your real estate business. And it's the last thing you will give up doing yourself if you decide to start a team and leverage your business to the point that you're no longer involved in the day-to-day -day running of it. Uh, there are those teams who have those rainmakers that you can all be one day that those rainmakers let their team lead generate. And the rainmakers take a step back and, and do the things that they enjoy and, and coach their team and those sorts of things. Um, any of you could be in that position one day, if well, that's I'm what interested you in that. Yeah, it wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, think about, so yeah, think about that. What we're learning today is the foundation for a million, multi-million, or even billion dollar business. This is also why your time each day completing your daily success system along with your peers and facilitators is so important. So, 
as you've learned, Keller Williams has a model for everything. It makes sense that there would be a model for your number one job, lead generation. Through, though it may look complicated, it's about one thing, relationships. You are in the relationship business. The more relationships you have, the more business you have. This model tells us how to get into relationships with people, stay in relationships with them, and be their real estate expert of choice to buy and sell real estate. So lead generation is simply getting people into your database so you can track your relationship with them. As you can see at the top of this model, there are two different activities that can bring leads into your business, prospecting and marketing. If you can never have too many leads, right? Um, where I talked a minute ago about that funnel, right? Where it's a lot of people at the top, but really only a few are gonna end up buying or selling, right? So you can never have too many people up in that top of the funnel that's nice and large. Um, it's just gonna mean that you have more people down at the bottom who actually end up buying or selling. So it's best practice to generate leads through a spot prospect, bleh, prospecting based in marketing enhanced approach. So um, this is, you've probably heard it before, lead with revenue, right? Um, the last thing we want you to do is get your real estate license, you know, be ready to go and say, I think I'll spend $2,000 on this big lead generation system. You know, um, we would rather you get into making money first and then you know, and then you can spend your money appropriately, right? So um, prospecting is that um, more free kind of way of, of finding business. Um, prospecting is proactive and direct. You are actively searching for leads. So prospecting is low cost to no cost method, yields a quantity of leads, which in turn gives you quality leads, establishes personal relationship, keeps you in direct contact with the market at the moment and increases your con your uh, confidence and skill. So um, with marketing, you're putting your information out there to attract leads through sources like social media or print ads, radio ads, promotional materials, et cetera. We'll talk a bit about that um, in some of the other sessions, but um, prospecting, you know, it's, it's time intensive, but it's not usually money intensive. Um, Let's see. The market, your preferences, your budget, and your goals will usually dictate the types of lead generation you employ. Top agents track their most productive lead sources, which usually are sphere of influence, repeat business, referral, and offline advertising, such as direct mail or yard signs and those sorts of things. Like I said, no single approach or method will bring you the leads you need to reach your goals. A blended approach is what works. So um, like I was saying, it's that stool, right? If you're just looking at your sphere of influence, you could probably do well, but you know, there's other places where you could also put your attention. Um, you know, depending on who you are as, as an agent and just, I think that's the coolest thing I think about real estate is that there are so many ways to be successful. Um, you know, I know of agents here at our market center that are really open house heavy and they do a lot of open houses and that's one of their really big lead sources. Um, I know other agents who get a lot of their leads from referrals and in the beginning they were calling it expireds and, you know, all these things. So I think that's what I love the most about real estate is that it's, it's easy from an outside perspective to look at someone else and go, oh man, I want to have that kind of career you know, I'm just going to do exactly what they did. But the reality is, is that we all have our different strengths and we all have our different approaches. And um, it, there's no one way to be really successful in this business. And I think that's the most exciting thing is that, um, you know, there's just, there's a multitude of ways to make this happen for yourself. Um, no matter your approach, you should always be offering some form of value in exchange for information. That information is what you need to continue the relationship. So we're not out there just saying, Hey, give me your email and phone numbers. And I'm just going to call you every two weeks and say, Hey, do you want to buy a house? Hey, do you want to buy a house? Hey, do you want to buy a house? Um, you know, we want to provide value to our clients, right. And we don't want to just bug them all the time. And, um, so, you know, being knowledgeable in the market and those sorts of things, um, inviting them to events. A lot of agents will do, you know, once you 
get a bigger uh, database of uh, previous clients and things like that. Or even maybe you could just do it now. You know, people will have events to get in front of people and say, hey, you know, I'm here. I'm still working, that sort of thing. Um, so although you don't want to rely on a single source for lead generation, you are, you are also aren't going to do all of them. The most productive agents focus on their three to five prop, top producing lead sources. So like I said, not only are you looking at, um, what you do well, but you're looking at what works well too, right? In Ignite, we're going to focus mainly on prospecting because we know successful lead generation is prospecting based. Prospecting is also less expensive and prospecting is what protects your business when the market slows down. Even more specifically, we'll focus on prospecting with your sphere of influence. As you gather people's information through prospecting or marketing or have a gen or have generated the lead, the next step will be to put that information into your database. So we talked about, you know, Tim, you were kind of saying, what's the difference, sphere of influence or your database? Mm. You're kind of with the sphere of influence, you're figuring out, you know, who can go into your database as far as people who are receptive, people who, um, oh, got someone in the waiting room, sorry. Um, and, um, you know, you're putting people in your, into your database that way. A database is simply a container that holds the information for all the leads you have generated. If you're looking for a cost-efficient tool to build out your smart database, Keller Williams has you covered with command. As I was saying before, command is more than a database. This is the platform you will have access to interconnected tools to support you from the lead to the close, all while maintaining your relationships. A smart database provides you with the ability to have planned and meaningful communication with those in it, which keeps you, you in a relationship. We can think of your smart database as a data bank because it generates money for you. There's nothing more valuable to your business than your data bank. Okay, so we use the terminology of leads and contacts to categorize people in your database. So far in your success system time, you've been communicating with your sphere of influence, people who know in who who you know and who know you. These are people these people are contacts with whom you have implicit permission to have a two-way conversation. Leads are people who have shown interest in the service you offer and have provided a way for you to connect contact them. However, they have not yet engaged in a two-way conversation with you. So, a lead is essentially, you know, someone who um you know, you're at least reaching out to if you're not talking back and forth, it's, it's a potential, um, client, right? So, um, your database is organized into these two buckets, leads and contacts, because the way you communicate with each segment is unique. So again, a lead is, is someone that, you know, maybe you, you're able to just have a one-way conversation with contact is someone who you're speaking to on a regular basis. Once you have a lead, you need to create a relationship with that person. For contacts, you want to sustain and strengthen your relationships. This is just an introduction into what sustaining relationship looks like since we have a whole section on lead follow-up later in Ignite. Sustaining your relationships is what we see in the model as cultivating contacts for conversion. When we say conversion, we mean to move them from a lead or contact to an appointment. So someone who's an appointment is even warmer than a lead, right? We kind of talk about, you know, cold leads, hot leads, that sort of thing. When, once you've got that appointment, that's when it really can, um, has the potential to, to develop into a, a working relationship with a client. Converting a lead or contact to an appointment means that your client has the intent to buy or sell real estate, which is, of course, what we want to have happened, right? We all just want to buy and sell houses. That's what I'm out here for. Okay. Each time you reach out to a person in your database, that communication is called a touch. 
A purposefully planned series of touches is called a campaign. So you've probably seen in command when you're in there too, we have our smart plans, we have campaigns. So um, a big thing in uh, Keller Williams is the 30, 36 touch, right? Over the course of a year, you're touching so many times. It's um, meant to be just kind of a, hey, how are you? I'm here to help if you need me. Don't forget that I work in real estate and I'd love to help you buy or sell or invest. A coordinated campaign of touches over time. A coordinated campaign of touches over time puts you in front, puts you front and center in people's minds when they think of real estate. These touches are how we nurture and strengthen our relationships. Having someone in your database does not make them your client. Reaching out to them consistently, systematically with value and deepening your relationship will lead them to choose to be your client. One way to consistently and systematically reach out to your database is through automated touches. Again, like I said, with command, we have those smart plans and smart opportunities plans. and ways to, um, you know, keep, keep reaching out. Was that someone who had a question? I don't want to. Hmm. No, maybe not. Um, these tools provide you with the option to automate your emails, text messages, and even set up notifications to remind you to call your leads and contacts. So that's an area in command that I really like is the tasks. Um, you can give yourself little tasks that you'll be reminded of. And you can load, get into command in the morning and you look at your tasks for the day and they're all right there and in front of you. <sighs> The final piece of the model is, of the model is the client and referral loop. Once the lead is converted into a contact, they can provide either new or repeat business or they can provide referrals. So that's something that's important to remember is even when someone says to you, oh, no, nope, I'm going to die in my house. I'm never leaving. I'm never moving and I'm never investing in any new real estate. Um, they might know someone who will. So that referral business um, is important too, as long as you're um, bringing them value and, you know, showing them that, you know, what you're doing over a long period of time, potentially, um, you know, they could send you business. Um, I have one friend in particular that, uh, she's not thinking of buying or selling, but she knows that I work in real estate. She sent me three different clients now in the last six months. So, you know, having those relationships and, and, um, coming with value is really important. So this model is referred to as a loop because regardless of the business they bring to you or how long it takes them to bring you business, they continue to stay in the database. It's your job to continue to build and develop that relationship over time until they are ready to transact again or provide additional referral business. As you nurture your leads and contacts and continue to lead generate for new sources of business, you will either be transacting from new repeat and or referral business. The most important thing to remember is that the lead generation is something that A, never ends. So you're always gonna be lead generating. Uh, it should be time blocked. B, it should be time blocked. Um, like I said, being able to have a really good schedule and protect your time. Um, and knowing when you're going to do that lead generation is really important. And C, it determines the size of your business and essentially is the how that will help you reach your goals for starting this career. Just going to make sure that I didn't miss anything. All of our stuff here. Okay. In our last section today, we are going to discuss time blocking for lead generation. Um, before we move on, are there any ahas? Are there any questions? Anything you want to share? All right. Awesome. We'll just keep rocking and rolling. I got to keep an eye on the time and make sure I'm not taking forever. All right, we're good. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the sphere of influence a bit still. Um, like I said, you know, this is that three-legged stool. If your sphere of influence isn't huge, there are other ways to generate business as well. This is just one that's really nice and right in front of you and 
and easy to access at this point. Your sphere of influence are the people in your life that, in, that you influence and who influence you. These can be close relationships like your close friends, family, or more distant connections like your children's friends, parents, a former coworker, a neighbor, or a mom's friend from college. It's important to connect with your current sphere of influence systematically, efficiently, and effectively. We're going to get into that a lot over the rest of Ignite. In order to get the most out of the follow-up, you will want to get the most people in your sphere. Um, sphere of influence to me is there's a lot of different sources there too. Um, you know, I've got like, obviously like my family and my friends that I talk to, um, you know, getting involved in different ways in your community is a really great way to expand your sphere of influence as well. Um, for example, I'm the, the president of the PTO at my kids' elementary school. This, um, is something that I, did before I even got into real estate. But now that I am in real estate, um, like I said, it's it's been a referral source. And that's not me going out and going, hey, welcome to the PTO meeting. A reminder, everybody, I work in real estate. Um, it's just a matter of these people know me. And I think they like me for the most part. They voted me in a couple of times. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a sphere of, it's, it's all that part of your sphere of influence. And it doesn't always have to be so, like, out and up front and hey, are you looking to buy, sell and invest or invest in real estate? Just being able to let people know that you're involved in um, this career can, can uh, generate you leads as well. So mm -hmm. there you go, right there. See all those people helping each other? It's kind of exciting when you really think about it because in, in real estate, our, our our job is to form relationships, right? And it's pretty exciting that we can go out and do things that we're passionate about, like, you know, help at our kids' school and things like that. And you're building relationships constantly. And like I said, it doesn't have to be this hard sell of like, and it doesn't have to be the reason that you're doing it either. It can kind of just be a, um, you know, a happy result is that you're doing these things you enjoy. You're, you know, let's say helping your kids' school or volunteering here and there. And um, you're doing it because it fills your soul. But then from time to time, someone might go, hey, you work in real estate, right? And then voila, you've got some business. So let's expand beyond your immediate relationships. One way to expand your sphere of influence is to change how you think about the relationships around you. So on page 5.9, we've got 15 categories that we can look at and it kind of just helps you think in your brain and expand and, and think about more people that you might be able to help with their um, real estate needs. So we've got the 15 categories here. One, immediately immediate family, friends, relatives, neighbors, past coworkers, hobby sports groups, teachers, worship, club, volunteer, uh, professional services, financial and legal services, personal services, home and auto services, real estate agents, and real estate services. So um, as you think about these 15 categories, let's just take a couple minutes here on page uh, 5.9, and I'm going to give you guys some time and shut my yapper for a minute and let you think about looking at all these different categories and kind of think of some, some people you know. So I'm gonna give you just a couple minutes to do that real quick. These are people that you can think of that aren't in your phone. Uh, we already kind of went over all your contacts and things like that. Um, just kind of go outside of that and think of um, who is someone else that you already know that might be able to use your services. I think past coworkers is a, a really good one for people. Yeah. Because, it, you know, depending on how long you had your past job or career, mm -hmm. you made some really good connections with some of your coworkers. I mean, I, I know I have with all my past jobs. So, mm -hmm. you know, past coworkers, I think, is a, is a good one and, and actually is a big part of my sphere of influence right now. So 
Yeah. The the other one that I really like is, you know, you talked about it a little bit earlier, Gary, you were meeting with some allied resources, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People who also are out looking for clients. Yeah. And it's, it's, that's the most exciting thing to me is when I can help my friends with their business and then they can help me with mine. Right. Right. So, you know, I think these people are in my contacts and my phone, obviously, but you know, um, my hairdresser, my esthetician, um, you know, people that, like I said, also need clients. They understand exactly what we're all trying to do, which is, you know, make a life worth living in a, and, um, so it's exciting to, to, I, I really like partnering up with people like that and being able to say, Hey, like, I know you're looking for business. So am I, let's help each other out here. Yeah. That's really fun. I went to the Eugene home and garden show this last weekend. Oh yeah. I love the home it show. Was, it was great. It was so, you know, I talked to, you know, at least half a dozen people in the time I was there. Yeah. Handed out business cards, talked to them about real estate for a good, you know, 10 minutes. 100%. You know, and um, I, you know, I got follow-ups. I got business cards that I need to put in my, you know, database right now to yeah. put on a, a smart plan and, you know, just yeah. a, a referral. You know, I like the smart plans. You could put a monthly referral request. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's huge. I, and that's a really great place to be too. I, I know I did the same thing. I was talking to a, a gentleman that, and they get excited when they find out you work in real estate and it's yeah. like, wow, this person really wants to talk to me. They want to be friends. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. At the home show, people are like just kind of standing there in booths yeah. waiting for someone to talk to about their business. So it's true. Yeah. And, and a lot of those services at the home show are things that are relevant to real estate. Oh, hundred you know, percent. Construction companies, there's, you know, HVAC companies. Oh, hundred um, percent. You know, I talked to the Culligan guy for 20 minutes, you know, and yeah. you know, that kind of stuff just, yeah, it was great. You know, I, I went in there at first going like, oh gosh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, and it all, we, we took the kids and it was really cool because every every booth handed out candy. So it actually made it really fun for the kids too. <laughs> so, Okay, this is slightly off topic, but I'm going to show you the photo that I took of my kids after the home show. Because look at them with their bags. Oh yeah, that's my, <laughs> <laughs> might still have candy. It's like trick-or-treating a week early. Well, that's why I was like, well, at least we don't have to go trick-or-treating this, you yeah. know, girls. And they're like, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it, it's great though, Gary, because I know, like knowing you, I know that you weren't out there with this hard sell of like, okay, well now, you know, can, can you give me a bunch of phone numbers? Can you, can you do right. this? You know, like you're, you're building those relationships, which is hugely yeah. important. So hopefully that gave you that chit chatty time, give you a little bit of time to think on this. Um, now, if you count the names you wrote down, who and if you have time, add that into what we did before, right? Um, calculate that number of people that you just added there. We did it on, I'm trying to look at, make sure that I have the right. If you were able to add up those people, you know, we, we did it before and we times it by 0 0.81, 0 0.081, I think is what we did before. Um, it says 0 0.81 right here, but that's not correct. Um, and it'll give you another number to tell you, you know, the percentage of people that potentially would want to buy or sell or invest in real estate. And then you can times that by the potential income. Um, and voila, you've got another source of, of income there. So all right, now we are going to shift our mindset mindset yet again. I want you to think back on your day yesterday. We're going to take just a couple minutes to think back on it from the time you got up to the time you went to bed. When you woke up, what did you do? Did you call your mom? Did you look at the news on your phone? Did you check your email? Did you grab your workout clothes and go for a run? Take yourself through your day. Just go your go through your whole day. Wake up, shower, send a couple emails, all this. Um, and take a minute to write down 
where you went and what you did. Let me give you a second to do that. This is on page 5.10. What, who, where, when. Um, so if you've kind of got a, a general idea of what you did yesterday, take a look at that and write down who you're inter interacted with or spoke with during those moments. Who was the first person you interact with? Did you have a conversation? What did you talk about? Who did you email? Who did you call or who called you? Who did you say hi to or smile at? Did you wave at your child's friend's mother at the drop-off? Did you smile at the barista before he took your order for coffee? Take a minute and go back through your day and jot down the people you interacted with. I can't remember that far back. I know. What did I even eat for breakfast? I was with you yesterday morning. Oh yeah. <laughs> we had our all partners meeting. <laughs> Sorry, Gary, I don't want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Right. <laughs> Take me off your list. Right. <laughs> so, if you've identified your activities and identified the people you interacted with, now I want you to think about those interactions. Could you deepen your relationship with those people? Could you have smiled at the neighbor and politely said, I know we see each other every day and I don't know your name. I'm Madeline. Of course you could. What about those you didn't interact with? Could you have smiled and said good morning to the barista rather than just ordering? Yes, of course you could. It's time, it's time to change the way you think about your days. You aren't just running errands. You're meeting potential buyers or sellers. You aren't just ordering coffee. You're creating a relationship with the people who help you. And because of that relationship, you may be poised to help them the day they are ready to buy or sell real estate. So I similarly, you know, thinking about my day yesterday, I wake up, I take my kids to school. I pass one, two, three, four different people at the school who know that I work in real estate, but maybe I've never talked to them about it, right? Um, as I walk into the school to take my kids to class, I see all those people and then I walk back out and I see them again. And, um, you know, obviously those people are at work, like, you don't want to learn too much, but being able to just let people know that you, you see on a regular basis, um, that you, that you work in real estate. Um, it doesn't have to be, like I said, it doesn't have to be a hard sale, a hard sell. It can just be, you know, a simple conversation and, and deepening a relationship. Your job is to meet and connect with people. And if you think about it, it's pretty amazing because it is. All you got to do is just be out there, be yourself, provide value, come from a place of contribution, and um, you'll do great. Speaking of kids' school, um, I was picking up my kids the other day, last week or a couple of weeks ago, and I overheard somebody talking about how they had to show a house. Like they were on the phone, kind of being loud. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you know, my ears perked up and I kind of ear hustled a little bit and I, listened to her. And then when she hung up the phone, I just kind of was like, I don't want to sound weird or anything, but are you in real estate? And she says, yeah, I am. I'm like, I overheard you. I'm in real estate too. And I just so happened to have a house. I heard you say you needed to find a house for a buyer. And I just so happened to have a house in Junction City, you know, and I just went through the whole thing and she kind of laughed and I'm like, Hey, you know, uh, these are unconventional times right now. So I'm, you know, thinking outside the box and yeah. you know, who knows, this might be the house for you guys. And, you know, and then, you know, I exchanged emails with her and messaged her and stuff. We messaged back and it was funny, but it's just, you know, putting yourself yeah. out there. And I think la when I first got started, they said, you know, you know, don't be loud about it, but you know, mention it in public, like, oh, I'm just coming from a, a showing. Yeah. So that gets people's ears perked up to, you know, oh, 100%. what? They're in real yeah. estate, you know? And well, and I think you touch on something really important too is, is camaraderie with our fellow agents, right? Yeah. Sometimes there can be this feeling of competition, you know? And I think that there's no place for that. Like, obviously, we're all competing with each other for these listings right and these buyers and stuff like that but the reality is that there's enough for everyone to go around and for you to walk up to someone and say hey i heard you're in real estate i just want to say hey that likely 
if you ask me, that will likely come back around to do something good for you yeah. um, because it's a, an amazingly small world in this business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see the same names coming up over and over again. And I wouldn't be surprised if in a year's time you had a listing and you got an offer from that very agent and you said, Hey, that's really cool. Remember when we met and then you guys already have a connection and it's going to make the transaction that much better. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're talking now about, you know, gaining clients, but the reality is, is networking within our community as well is hugely important um, in just to just being able to, to operate smoothly and, um, it's fun that way. It really is, you know, making friends with other agents from other brokerages. Cause like I said, we're competition with each other, but really we all got to be friends. <laughs> right. And you know, uh, what, what, what were the stats of, you know, actively, you know, people who are actively in real estate? I mean, yeah, you might have your mm -hmm. license, but there's, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many people that aren't doing yeah. real estate. So if you make friends with somebody who may have their license now, mm -hmm. you know, next year or in two or three years when they let their license lapse and they need somebody to sell it or buy a house, hundred percent. somebody they know, bam, you have a referral. hundred percent. Yeah. So, That's hugely important. Yeah. So let's see. This next part says that we're having a discussion with a partner, but that's going to be too hard. We're all on the computer, so we're not going to do that. So I'm going to go to the next. As you saw in the last exercise, sometimes all you need to do is think about things from a different angle and you can achieve more. You found more members of your sphere of influence simply by viewing them as categories of people you know. At KW, there's a coaching program called Bold. Um, I heard rumors that Bold will be in Eugene soon. I'm not sure though. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. I mean, I've heard, you know, older agents, I don't want to older agents, but veteran yeah. agents uh -huh. talk about Bold. But yeah. yeah, I haven't seen anything about a bold class. So I'm kind of yeah. interested. Yeah. So it's it. a pretty big program. It's done over the course of, I want to say eight weeks. I did it. It was my birthday. So it was last spring. Um, and it's a great program. It's, it's a lot. It, it delves deep into mindset, into lead gen, into all those things. And it's, at the very least, like for me, it was like really motivating because it really, it's a, it's a really cool program. And if you, I've, I'm hearing that there's rumors of it being around Oregon, um, in the spring, and I'm sure you'll hear from your market center if that happens. Um, is, is it true that it kind of takes you out of your comfort zone a little bit? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I understand. So. A little bit. Yeah. People cry in that room. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like usually like good you know like self-transformation kind of like kind yeah. of stuff. like it's it gets you in your feels for sure and it helps you um narrow down your real goals what you really want from life um that's the cool thing is that it's not um it's it's a lot of lead gen it's a lot of that kind of stuff but it's a lot of also just really encouraging mindset stuff that that gets you in the right place to be like hey I can do this and it's, it's really great. Um, but I'll read from my script, what it says, <laughs> bold stands for a business objective, a life by design. One of the greatest things about bold is that it helps you create a mindset of abundance and growth. See, that's what I was trying to say. Bold helps you shift your mindset using bold laws. This is one of those laws that you see right here in front of you. Change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. What you just did with the 15 categories is a simple example of changing how you look at things so that things so that the things you look at change. You changed how you look at those you know and were able to find more people by doing so. Being a successful agent is about finding more people to help and serve in buying or selling their homes. When you change how you look at the world, you will find more of those people that you can help. I love that bold law because it's true. Um, so many people say, oh, I have to lead generate. Uh, it's nine o'clock. I have to lead generate. The reality is, is you get to lead generate, right? 
you get to be in this career where, you know, the most difficult part of your day, oh, boo-hoo, is picking up the phone and calling some people, right? Uh, a lot of people have a lot more, you know, strenuous uh, careers than that, right? And um, we're pretty lucky to, to, to be in the career we are in. So questions, ahas? You will hear if Bold is coming to your market center. I guarantee you, you will hear it if Bold is coming to your market center. <laughs> you'll walk in one day and everything will be purple and uh, you'll you'll know. Trust me. How long did you say the Bold thing is? Did you say eight weeks? I think it was eight weeks. Let me look at my little thing here. And it's an all day. Um, it's just like one, one time one, a week. One day a week, all day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, in a lot of ways, it's really similar to Ignite in that, you know, there's accountability and things like that. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven or eight weeks. Cause I feel like there's another week that's not one of the steps, but this is my bold book. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it was good, it, it's really good. And like I said, I guarantee you'll know when Bold's coming to your market center. You won't. Um, I have to run and grab my daughter from school. If I log in from my phone, can you let me back in? Absolutely. I'll keep an eye out. Okay. Not sure how on time I am, but I'm going to try and keep rolling. So um, we talked about your sphere of influence. Next, we're going to talk about expanding your sphere of influence. Um, a good touch campaign consists of several types of interactions, face-to-face, -face, email, handwritten notes, et cetera. In order to complete these touches from with everyone in your sphere of influence and database, you need to have their contact information. So uh, contact information is important because obviously we wanna reach out to them in various ways. Um, handwritten cards make a big impact, yet it's more expensive and time consuming than just sending an email. But a handwritten card may not be the best channel for a lot of information. Um, imagine mailing an update on the homes that you've sold in your sphere of influence's neighborhood versus sending an email. With an email, your sphere of influence has the ability to click on the hyperlinks and to learn more about the homes in their neighborhood. Not only do you want to want a contact information, you also want to gather their personal information. So, we want to gather personal information because it gives us something to reach out about and helps us to know their needs better. Um, just today, like I said, I was on a call with uh, Jeremiah and he was talking about birth dates, work, uh, work anniversaries, house anniversaries, all those sorts of things. Those are all reasons to reach out and um, give a touch. So, It's the same with other personal information. Knowing that they love, knowing that they love to crochet, allows you to see an article online and share it with them. Knowing that they have kids lets you wish them a happy summer, or drop off a rainy day keep busy kit during the second straight week of rain when they know they will, when you know they'll likely be stressed out. So, um, just having all those little things, um, you know, knowing that they this is part of this is also you know, a lot of. Uh, Agents will stay in contact with their sphere of influence through Facebook. They, if you see, oh, you know, so and so got a new puppy, I'm going to send them a cute little dog bone or go deliver it on their doorstep with my business card saying, "Congrats on the new puppy." Here's a little something for that. Um, let's see. Another way to expand your sphere is to pull in those you have a casual relationships into closer proximity. We've already talked about this a bit when we went through your day, start to see everyday life tasks, errands as an opportunity to get in, into a closer relationship with people. Do you usually play games on your phone when not cheering your daughter's soccer team? If so, put down the phone and talk to the parent next to you. These folks may or may not be in the market for a home now, but don't forget that eight 0.1% of the people they know might be. Remember, this is your career. If they buy a house this year, great. If they buy a house next year, great. If they refer you business and buy multiple times with you over your career, even better. So um, 
yeah, like I said, it's just, it's a, it's a business of relationships. So these are all ways to expand your sphere of influence. Another great way to expand your SOI is to meet others with similar interests and values. If you love basketball, why not join a neighborhood league? Always wanted to help cleaning up the green spaces in your city? Do it. Real estate is a demanding career, and what career isn't? When you're starting a new career, it's important to have the career you enjoy. Go ahead and align your career with your interests and values, because those interests and values are what bring you the contact with like-minded people who need a place to live. Uh, this is actually something that I really liked. Another great tip to expand your sphere of influence is to wear your Keller Williams name and colors proudly. Um, I know a lot of agents that have name tags and they just wear them all the time because somebody might ask, somebody might say something and say, oh, I see your name tag there. Um, are you a real estate agent? Where do you work? That sort of thing. It's a little um, conversation starter. Um, let's see. One of the largest mega agents in our company was forced to leave his entire business when a hurricane devastated his area. <coughs> Excuse me. He and his wife picked up and moved to a place where they knew no one. They started their leader, lead generation by wearing their company shirts at the gym and around town. With their approachable demeanors and smiles, people asked them about their business. This gave them the perfect opportunity to tell people about real estate. So it's like I said, we're not working off just one thing. Your sphere of influence, if it's small, there's a lot of other ways to expand that and to meet more people and to make more contacts. Like we said before, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. Okay, referrals. When we discussed the lead generation model, we saw that your business will come from new repeat and referral business. Remember your sphere of influence are those people who know you, your reputation and your professionalism and are likely to give you referrals. Like you, they know lots of people and have their own spheres of influence. And guess what? Most of your sphere wants to help you succeed at your real estate business and are eager to help. Okay. Here are some conversation examples that may look familiar. Okay, first one, I'm building my business on people I know and the people they know. Do you know anyone from your family or friends, work, your neighborhood, or a group you belong to who's thinking of buying or selling a home or investing in real estate? I'd be pleased to be a resource for them. So that last line I like, because you're not necessarily saying, you know, I want them to give me business, right? You're offering to be a resource for them because we want to come from a place from contribution. We want to, um, you know, bring value to those, those folks. If you hear of someone with a real estate need, will you keep me in mind and let me know right away? So again, you're offering value. You want to um, help people meet their needs, right? And, and um, get business, man. All right. Any questions or ahas? That section was just about expanding your sphere in different ways to um, keep in contact with everyone. <clears throat> okay. Lead gen best practices. Now that you have a larger and deeper understanding of lead generation, it's important to your business. Let, let's put this into action. As you begin your real estate career, there are some best practices that will help you establish a productive lead generation system. The best lead generation program will be the one that you will be consistent with that also delivers leads. Consistency, time on task over time is gonna yield results. So these are, oh, let me get to the next. Here are your lead generation best practices. Uh, number one, you want to track your lead sources and keep track of where your leads are coming from. If you are delivering cupcakes to every dentist's office in the entire 
area, right? And you don't never get a single lead from it. That's probably not a good investment of your time and resources. So maybe figure out that something else works better, right? Uh, you also want to audit your lead sources to determine what your top lead sources are. It's best practice to focus on your top three to five. So on that same token, you could be doing, uh, you know, six things and really only three of them are really yielding you any results. It'd probably be best to get rid of those other three that aren't doing any good for you and, and focus on the ones that um, are really, really making a difference. Uh, diversify your database. An openness to a diverse client base opens opportunities. Diversifying your database today brings more leads today and exponential future in the growth. A diverse database and sphere of influence prepares your business for changes in the market. The broader and more inclusive your client pool, the more ready you will be for changes from demographic shifts to new trends in the real estate industry. Be consistent and realist in lead generate every day. Again, time on task over time will yield results. So time block your lead generation time. So this is really important. Like I said, we talked a little bit about time blocking earlier. Um, another bold law is it if it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist. Um, that's really important, right? So we want to have our, our time scheduled out and protect that bunker so that um, you're able to get that lead gen time in. Top agents time block lead generation first. Most top agents lead generate for three or more hours a day. It's best to schedule your lead generation time. That is, take action on your job one before anything else. Block this time in your calendar as essential. It's important to your business as brushing your teeth every morning is for your health. You've been doing this in your daily success system since the beginning of Ignite, and you'll continue with this schedule after Ignite for your entire career. This time consists of several activities, preparing your... One, preparing your mindset for success. Two, practice conversations with a partner. Three, prepare a call list in advance of contacting people. Four, have conversations. Five, maintain an up-to-date database by putting in notes from your conversation. And six, follow up with any commitments or promises made. Lead generation is hands down, without a doubt, no competition, your number one most important thing to do in order to succeed in this business. Therefore, you must mark off time to do it and to do it well. There are four key things you can do to protect your lead generation time block once you set it. So on in your book, 5.13 uh, is a protect your time block little worksheet here. Um, first thing, build a bunker. Um, I know that I feel like I've done it all right. Being, um, as far as location of work, right. Uh, being self-employed, I was, I've been in real estate. I was in construction before that self-employed there as well. Um, I tried having an office at home. My desk was next to my bed, right? I tried having an office outside of the uh, uh, house, right? And then I tried making a more dedicated office space in my home. So I had a little bit more of a, a spot to be. A huge thing is going to be building your bunker and having a space where you will not be interrupted, where you feel comfortable, where you feel calm, where you feel like you can really get down to business. So on page 5.13, where will you work to avoid distractions? So just take a second to think about and jot down a place. Um, you know, some of us obviously have offices outside of our home. Some people um, work inside their home. Some people, you know, work on the go. I don't, I don't know your life, but it all works. And that's the great thing about real estate, right? Is we can kind of make it look the way we want to look. But an important thing is to have a dedicated space or at least you know, a, a bunker built around your lead gen time so that you uh, can avoid distractions. Um, 
Number two there, store provisions. What provisions will you have in place? Have supplies, materials, snacks, beverages you need on hand to avoid leaving your bunker. So, uh, you know, it's easy for me to sit down in everyone, any one place and I have my phone all the time. But if I get an important call and someone starts telling me details like what they want in the house, where they want to be, how many acres they need, how many bathrooms they need, I also need um, somewhere to write that down. So making sure you have all the proper provisions, have some notes, have some water, have, you know, a snack if you need it. I know one of the agents here in our office, she told me one day she had gotten to work and forgot her charger for her computer. And she was like, I, I have to come use yours. She, she asked to borrow my charger because she said, I already put all my stuff out. I had my snack. I had my water bottle. I had my notebook. I was all ready. I can't clean all that up and go home and get my charger. <laughs> I've already made my place. And she's a mega agent in our office. She knows the importance of having everything so that you're comfortable and ready to work. Um, the next thing, number three, sweep for mines. What distractions will you remove? This means anything that will distract you or take you, take you off your focus. Turn off your phone. We're obviously probably using our phone for lead gen. So figure that out. Um, shut down your email, exit your internet browser. The last thing we want to do is sit down for lead gen and get into our computer and go, okay, I think I'll just check the news before I uh, start making my phone calls. I think I'll just see what's on my Facebook feed before making my phone calls. And then three hours later, you've been scrolling. We don't need that. So sweet for minds. Um, take a second to just write down what kind of distractions you can remove um, from your area. The other thing would be to enlist support. Tell those mo most likely to seek you out what you were doing and when you'll be available. So, you know, um, common practice I would have is to shoot my husband a text and say, hey, don't bug me for a little bit. I'm going to be lead genning. Um, you know, just protect that space um, and protect that time to get those lead gen hours in. Let's see. So as we wrap up our learning session and transition to our success system, let's do a quick review and capture ahas. We talked about a lot about what you're already doing to lead generate. What can you add to your everyday routine and how important is time blocking for focused lead generating? So yeah, what do you guys feel like you can add to your routine? We, we talked about the sphere of influence and making those contacts. What are some of the things that you think you can add in to, to find a little more success? Uh, I like the whole like sweep for landmines or I was kind of thinking like build your battle station and don't let anything, you know, infiltrate your battle station yeah. as your lead jenny kind of. Yeah. turn off the phone or you know the ringer or mm -hmm. um, yeah just kind of stay focused on that and and get your snack that was yeah. really important <laughs> snack uh, yeah. tell the spouse to uh beat it for a couple hours <laughs> and you're busy exactly <laughs> exactly it, it makes me think of kind of this time right now that i i had to look at my schedule I mean, I'm talking to you guys directly right now, right? I, if my phone rings, I can't pick it up and be like, hang on everyone, hang on all you 14 people that are here to hear me read this curriculum. Let me just talk on the phone. We need to look at our lead gen in that same manner. If someone were to come knock on my door right now, I'm going to have to say, see it. I'll have to talk to you later, right? We protect our time when we're, you know, doing something like this and really focus, but we tend to look at lead generation as something that we can kind of hop in and out of, and you're going to be most successful when you can protect that bunker. We need to look at a lead. Don't be distracted on purpose. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when we're not necessarily wanting to do these things right. and so we just start. Yeah. What was that? Uh that lady in Hillsborough, she said, oh, she had to clean out the track of her sliding door with a Q-tip. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, well, true. it has to be we'll, done. <laughs> we'll always find other things to right? do. It's insane. So yeah. Um, anyone else have anything that they feel like they might add to their, um, their just time blocking in their routine to, to set themselves up for success.
So, so when we're talking about um, block, blocking the three hours for lead gen, is that's yes. not including follow up with our sphere, or is it? Um, that is part of it. Let's see. Interactions. I'm going deeper. With I think. Those. Emily, I'm sorry, we're having a really hard time. It's sounding a little garbly because you're, um, maybe if you want to put something in the chat, if you have a question or something, because it's a little, it's not coming through quite as well as we'd like. Sorry, I know you're kind of out there as far as location goes, internet can be a little. <laughs> Turn off the Wi-Fi on your phone. That helps. Yeah, so, um, if we go back and kind of look at the time block lead generation time, follow-up is in there. Um, you know, I would say the important thing is to separate it from each other, right? Um, to be able to, you know, look at your certain amount of lead gen time. So we're time blocking lead gen, right? But even beyond that, we're time blocking within the lead gen, which kind of lead gen we're doing, right? So, um, you know, the time that the list that I have here, we have consists of preparing your mindset for success, practicing your conversations with a partner. So script practice can also kind of go into that time, prepare a call list in advance of contacting people. So understanding who you need to follow up and all that kind of stuff. So you're time blocking that lead gen time, but then within the lead gen time, you're also time blocking which activity you're doing. Um, so you can, um, you know, yield the best results in bold. And I think um, it's a really great strategy for you guys too, as we learn, you know, 20 contacts a day, or sometimes people will also do like the bold 100, which I never got there. I have to admit people would do 100 contacts in a day. So they wanted to have 100 conversations in one day with different people. Um, that's a pretty lofty goal. But once you've done that one day, the next day, 20 feels easy. So um, you know, I think that's really valuable within your lead gen time is, is being able to, um, uh, you know, just figure out exactly how you're going to spend that time. Emily, thanks for typing in there. She said, my aha is to dig deeper into your daily interactions. And don't forget that each person you interact with is a potential client. It's so true. And like I said, when we're out and about, um, those allied resources, I think are huge. You know, when I, the thing that I think of specifically is like when I, if you go get coffee every morning, right. And maybe, you know, I know in my community, there's this little coffee stand that everybody goes through each day. And the, the lady who works in there, she's a business owner too. And she gets it. And she wants people to be coming through and to be able to say to her, Hey, you know, FYI, I work in real estate. If you know anybody, you know, I know we see each other every day, but this is what I do. And, uh, you know, like Gary said, you know, oh, you know, that person says to you, how's it going? Oh, great. Well, I'm going to show some houses today. I'm really excited about that. You know, that's an easy way to bring that conversation in. So um, that is generally it. Um, I think the really important thing that I want you guys to, to remember in all of your Ignite um, stuff, if I can just give like my little tidbit of advice, um, is that it's like I said, there are so many ways to be successful in this business and, um, your business is not going to look just like Gary's business or Tony's business or Felicia's business. It's, we all do it differently. And it always amazes me, um, how, you know, from time to time I'll hear a different name and I'll go, I've never heard that name before. Like that person works in real estate and I'll look them up and sure enough, they're doing, you know, 20, 30 deals a year and they're doing awesome and killing it. And I've just never heard of them just because I don't know. I just haven't, you know, and I see a lot of contracts every day. So, um, it always just amazes me how much business there is out there for everyone and, um, how much abundance there is. Right. So if you get to the end of Ignite and you go, man, you know, I don't know if I can make 20 phone calls a day. I don't know if I can do, you know, I don't know if, if this is really for me. Um, there's so many ways to be successful. And if, you know, this, these models that Keller Williams sets up, they work. And that's why we teach this stuff, right? Is because it works. Um, but my takeaway that I want you guys to have is just that 
there's a million ways to be successful in this business. And all these steps that we're talking about today work. And, um, but there's also a million other ways that you can make it work too. So that's just my encouraging, um, hopefully encouraging, I don't know, maybe I'm just yammering at you and you don't care. But my, what I always try and tell people is that there's just so many ways to make this business work for you. And your business is going to look the way that you want it to look. Maybe you want it to be six transactions a year and you're perfectly happy with that. Maybe you want that to be 150 transactions a year and you know, you're, you're going to be happy when, when you get there. But the point is, is that everyone's business looks different. And, um, you know, we just want you all to be building those experiential lives that we can, uh, support and, uh, help you guys get to where you want to be. So let's see, make sure I didn't forget anything. Each day at Ignite, each day at Ignite, you grow in how you think, feel, act, and implement what you've learned. From learning and ahas, you move toward achievement of your big life. And that's what we're here for, right? To achieve our big goals. Like I said, no matter what those goals are, if those goals are selling 100 houses a year, or if those goals are selling 10 houses a year, uh, you can achieve those goals. Taking time to reflect on what you've learned is important in building your confidence confidence and celebrating your growth. Um, so in your participant guide, page 5.14, um, if you could just take a minute, you can do it now or you can do it when we get off here because we're pretty much done. Um, Take a minute and, and look at how your thinking has changed. Um, what do you feel differently about? How will your behaviors be different going forward? What actions will you take? What tools, models, or systems will you use? And how will they make you accountable? So just taking a minute to fill out this um, turn ahas into achievement page um, is kind of a really good wrap up for you guys. Um, Taking the time to reflect on what you've learned is important in building your confidence and cel celebrating your growth. So now we move on to important success system time. This is where you lead Jen, folks. Um, so we don't, we're, I wish we were in person. I'm honest, I'm gonna be honest there because there are things that we could do role-playing scripts, all those sorts of things that really aren't very practical in Zoom. But um, yeah, I just, real quick, it's 3.02, so I will definitely let you guys go. But um, great job being here. Great job keeping with it. Like I said, everyone's business is going to look different. Um, everyone's success is going to look different. And um, you guys are killing it you're here, you're doing it, you're doing the work and you're doing awesome. So thanks so much for being on. Go ahead. And had, oh, oh, sorry to interrupt. I was going to say, I had an aha moment that I just wanted to share really quickly. Um, yeah. It was when Gary was talking about how he went to the, Gary, what'd you say? It was like the home and garden um, yeah. show or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Eugene home garden show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking I like to go because we're coming into the holidays and there's always yeah. like Christmas bazaars and all kinds of things like that coming up in the next, you know, eight weeks or so, or, you know, two months, whatever. Uh -huh. um, and I thought I like to go to those things. And I would have never thought about passing around business. Or, you know, I just, it made me think I'm bringing my business cards with me. And cause you never know, yeah. you know, I, I always talk to people and you know, they're kind of like, like-minded like me, they're there for the yeah. same reasons. And so I thought, mm -hmm. wow, what a good opportunity to kind of yeah. maybe make some connections. And well, a hundred percent. And you know, those are, those are allied resources right there because, you know, something that a lot of agents do in, in our work is closing gifts. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. Cool stuff that, mm -hmm. Good point. you know, you're supporting that business, you're supporting their business, right? You know what you do. Um, and you could totally approach it that way too. You could go up to a booth and say, oh my gosh, this is so cute. This would make the cutest closing yeah. gift. And then that's when you could kind of like lead in with like, I'm a, I'm a real estate agent and I'm putting together sure. closing gifts or something, you know, hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coming from a place from contribution, um, you know, 
you're not only asking them for business, but maybe you're getting their business card too and saying, Hey, you know, I know so-and-so maybe, you know, someone who would really love their stuff. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. A hundred percent. I think that's really smart in any way, you know, that you can just advance those relationships just a little bit to, to let people know, um, what you're doing in business. It's a great idea. Great yeah. Idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, and I mean, not that I didn't learn a lot today, but I think yeah. that was kind of my moment. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to do yeah. that. You know, <laughs> if you take one thing away, from then it's a success. Rambling, if Absolutely. you take one thing from my rambling, <laughs> then I'm glad that was it. Well, it was more Gary's rambling. No, I'm just kidding. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> no, just it's, kidding. Yeah. And like I said, you know, if, if making phone calls, isn't your jam, maybe getting out and talking to people and getting in front of people and being in, in groups and, and going to events and being on, you know, boards for charities and things like that. That's, you know, a way to, to also get out there and, and get your name out there. So yeah, I think that's huge. I think that's really smart too. Uh-huh. Good. Awesome guys. Well, I'm here in the Eugene Springfield office. If there's any of you down here that, um, I haven't met yet, I hope to see you soon. Uh, come to command class tomorrow. If you're in Eugene Springfield, if you're not, uh, you know, shoot me an email what time um, is that class again. Uh, so the video class starts at 11 15. That's kind of a fun class about that. Jeremiah is, um, doing about how to do some, uh, uh, the uh thing. yeah, it's like an interview thing. I'm, it sounds really cool. I'm, I'm not completely sure on um uh whoops sorry jennifer i just sent you oh i didn't send there um and then at noon is the command and docusign class which i'm super jacked about it's really really valuable um for keeping things organized i'm actually gonna send out an email to be like hey listen guys for real you never get an email from me about classes. I mean it. Come to this one. <laughs> so but the interview one, I think, is about. Um, sorry to interrupt. It's okay. about about interviewing allied resources like lenders, you know, and yeah, um, getting them talking. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Jeremiah was also talking about it like a uh, client reviews too. Like you can send something to a client and say, Hey, can you, you know, record this thing if you're comfortable? And it's like a video review that then you can put out, which I think is super powerful. I mean, reviews are like the number one thing, you know, if you can get some of those and show people that you know what you're doing, then that's huge. So anywho, well, guys, people are just bowing out here. Thank you for being here. I don't want to take <laughs> more of your time. You. Thanks so Thank much. You. And uh, keep killing it out there, guys. You're doing awesome. Okay. Bye, guys. See ya. Thanks, Madeline. <laughs>